Thank you for joining. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Welcome to Hard Talk with Mel. I am Melanie and I'm your host. Always the live, livest host in the room. Thank you for coming in. Happy International Women's Day, guys. Um, I salute you, all of my incredible sisters out there. I salute you. Um, and, you know, to channel Dana Guerrero, I'm going to say during her essence speech, her essence thank you speech, I want to say forward Bambea. Not so sure well I did on that, but I'm trying. Yes, guys. Joy, if you could do me a favor and just share this. Oh, you did already. I saw it. Thanks. Give me a second. Pause for a second. So, hi, Julia. Thanks for coming. Is today your birthday? Happy birthday, by the way. I think I saw that somewhere. Happy birthday on International Women's Day, or was it yesterday? I'm not sure, but happy International Women's Day, Julia. Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining. So, guys, tonight, we continue the... Um, let me share this with my speaker. She said she's not seeing me. Hold on a second, guys. Uh, give me a second. Let me just share this with her so she can see me. Okay. Thanks, Joy. Okay, hold on one second. Let me just... Oh, she's on. She's on. I see you, Ilona. Can you make a... I should be able to add you. Can you make a comment for me in the comment section? Just say hi. Thank you so much. Okay, guys. So for those of you who are on tonight, we finish our month-long conversation around environmental wellness. And environmental wellness really inspires us to live a lifestyle that is very respectful of our surroundings, encourages us to live in harmony with the earth and taking action to protect it. And it promotes an interaction with nature and your personal environment, whether that's inside and or outside. And I'm not sure if you missed it, but a few weeks ago, Joy and I, well, last week actually, during the good weather, Joy and I did a whole earthing segment. You can check it out on my Facebook page, and I think it's on my YouTube channel as well. We went out there and we were just connecting with the earth, having the electrons come into our body. And I'm going to have some my doctor actually come to talk about that in a few weeks. But um, so we started off the series last week with all about the sisters and we talked about this new woman's tribe coming to New York City that started right here in New York City this January. And they're all about getting outside. So they include things like hiking and um, outdoor activities as well as workshops and retreats to help promote self-care and self-love. Hey, Kimlin, thanks for watching. Um, I got your email and I will get back to you. I will respond to the email. I've been a little backlog on the emails so i will respond um so yeah so thank you so much guys for joining me here again if this is your first time in the room i'm melanie of melaniemotivates.com and i'm a creative wellness coach helping women embrace their healing journey really great to kind of really helping them to turn their pain into power and so um do me a favor can you all share this broadcast with friends, family, anybody who you think can benefit from what we're going to talk about here tonight. And we have an awesome guest who is waiting. Yes, she is waiting. I'm going to see if I can bring her in. Uh, I'm going to try to bring her in a little while. Alona. Okay, so I'm, I'm able to. So I'll bring her on in a little while. But guys, yes, tonight, our, our guest tonight is Alona Dijon, and I hope I'm saying that correctly. She's an urban farmer and educator here in New York City. Alona is the co-founder of Sprout by Design, and at the early age of 21, she began her career as an industrial design engineer creating products for healthcare, but has spent the last decade using urban farming as a medium for education and early healthcare prevention. Yes, I fire or something was messed up. But guys, if you're joining me again, this is Hard Talk with Mel. Here she is. Yes. 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 Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. It's, this is exactly what I was telling you about Facebook. Yep. It's so funky sometimes. So funky. But Alona, thank you so much for joining us. I know you have a limited amount of time, so I'm going to get right to it. You're welcome. Um, I'm happy to be here. I guess, um, right, my audience is going to be back on in a short second. But um, tell us a little bit about what, what you're doing. You're, you're, you're a... 
you're a, you're an urban farmer and an educator. Tell us a little bit about what that means and what you're doing in New York City currently. Yes. Yeah, so basically, um, me and my company and, and my partner um, at Sprout by Design, we um, teach people how to grow food in the city. So um, it can be indoor, outdoor, on a rooftop, in a basement, in a windowsill, any, any space that you have. And New York City has very, very little space. So uh, we have to right. be very creative, very creative. So right. we, yeah, so we, like and we teach people how to do it, yeah. And so um, we work mostly with um, schools and youth. We work a lot with middle school youth, and we also work a lot with um, adults. Uh, we work a lot with the formerly homeless population. We work with um, um, uh, people with special needs. So it's a really, really diverse group of people. Yeah, and it goes literally from preschoolers to seniors. Oh, wow. That's, a, yeah. that's awesome. It's a really, that's yeah. an awesome life journey to have. Wow. Um, so you're a designer of healthcare products as well. Um, yes. And you started out doing that. How did that influence um, this change or this transfer into what you're actually Absolutely. doing now? Yeah, so I really found that a lot of um, product design um, in the healthcare was focused on, um, well, you know, once people are already sick. And I wanted to see what we could use as a design thinking to prevent people from getting mm -hmm. sick in the first place. And so I did a lot of like research and thinking like, what can we do? What are, what are the biggest healthcare issues of our time and in our future? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the uh, main things that really uh, are going to be an issue and already are, are obesity and all related diseases yeah. from there, diabetes and all everything, all the complications that come from there. So what could I do to prevent those issues rather than, you know, make a things for once you have that? What can we do to prevent obesity and prevent, because it's so much harder to turn it around once you're already there. It's a lot right. it's hard, but it's also more effective to um, prevent um, healthcare issues. So I started to think about what can I do to prevent this? And I figured out that I have to um, work with people um, ideally as young as they can, to really get mm -hmm. kids to, um, yeah, to learn about growing food, you know, and get um, and understand what it means to be healthy from the beginning. And gardening basically does the two main things that you need to have a healthier life, which is move more right. and eat better. When you garden, you ah. have to move. And then once you right. grow tomatoes and carrots and, you know, whatever it is and any delicious things, you will be so much more likely to eat it and especially eat it unprocessed because right. that's the second step. Like eating vegetables right. is, you know, great, but there's a difference between eating vegetable, I don't know, spring roll that has been processed that has like three million ingredients in it versus eating, you know, a carrot or right. a cabbage straight out of the ground. Right. Joy, you should like this, her, you know, her, um, one of her motives is move more. That's my cousin. She's a fitness coach, and she her she's always about moving more. So she gets me moving when I try exactly. to you know try to be lazy. Yep. It's, it's so all it's part of it. Moving and eating for healing. Yeah. Is it community outreach? Both. Yeah, it's it's a combination of everything. So absolutely, the it started really as a preventative wellness. Um, yeah, that's really where it started, and then from there it, um, yeah, it started really understanding that. Um, you know, it's, it's also so personal. It's like food is what brings us together. It's like um, we all have memories and stories about food, about gardening. So um, I realized very quickly how important um, that part is as well, you know, the, the connection, the community. Yeah. And um, also gardening is a really good equalizer. It's one of the things that Leslie, my partner, says, uh, you know, it's like um, in the garden there's no, like, you know, power distances and um you know this is my job everybody is just the same we're all in it we, we nobody knows exactly. better than the other we just you know it's like oh i you know i happen to have luck with this and i happen to have right. luck with that and you kind of learn from each other so as a seven-year-old you can teach somebody something and as a 70 year old you can teach somebody something or learn something you know it's like it's it's really a beautiful place that i've um yeah that i found where um yeah, where we can really connect as human beings. Mm -hmm. 
So, so there's nothing like green thumbs? Because I used to think I have a green thumb because, you know, that's what we say where I come from. You have a green thumb yes, and all you have a green thumb or not, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, some people, it doesn't matter what they do, right? It seems like it starts to grow. Um, but I, I so right. I think there are, are green thumbs, but I don't think people say, oh, I have a black thumb. Like, I can't grow anything. I will kill it all. That, I know, I feel like... I, Right. You can bring that. It, it, it really is. It, and then it's usually it's things like overwatering, which are usually an issue when it comes to um, um, yeah. like yeah. people killing plants by accident. It's usually overwatering or not enough light. And so it's just like try to plant the right thing. Right. So I try to teach people like, you know, if, if it's that, just right. stop watering, you know, like yeah, there's a lot of things that you can do to to make sure that you at least don't feel like you have a black thumb. So at least it's like a light green. <laughs> Okay. Your your Wi-Fi is going in and out a little bit, so you're a little bit oh. shaky. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, that's fine. But girl, we live in a Wi-Fi world, so we just I depend know. on the tech to it. I know, I know. Unfortunately. Yep. So you use a myriad of techniques as a tool to advance STEM studies. And for those of you who are watching, STEM is um, science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, what impact have you seen in your workspaces, educational or otherwise, since you've been doing urban farming and yes. helping you so, know, to yeah. bring awareness? Yeah, so one of the things, I'm, I'm an absolute nerd. So, like, you know, like my, my degree is in engineering. I love science. I love, you know, um, chemistry. I love biology, all that kind of stuff, math. And so I try to sneak it in any way I can. So just today, for instance, I just... Uh, um, today we're learning, th- th- these, these few weeks we're doing indoor gardening, so we're doing aquaponics and hydroponics because it's too cold to um, ah. grow a lot of things outside. So it's very, and it's very technical, it can be very technical because you're measuring things it like is. the pH, you're measuring um, all the, the nitrates and the uh, ammonia levels. So um, today we did introduction to pH and um, right. yeah, and so we learned, um, so this, it worked today with like uh, 15, 16 year old students. And so they've heard about pH. Usually you hear about it like on a commercial for, you know, some, some product. Um, or they've learned about it in school, um, more of a, like, you know, like a technical way. And so what I show them is a very right. hands-on way of what does pH mean in your regular life? Like, what is pH? Like, you, 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 you hear about the concept, but what does it mean? So we tested um, all different kinds of chemicals, like, all around the house. Like, for instance, we tested vinegar, we tested baking soda, we tested... Um, laundry mm-hmm. detergent, and so then, and we use um, mm-hmm. um, things that you can visually see the difference and what does it mean. So we use something that changes color based on the pH. So you can see it go from pink to purple to green, and you know you can see it versus just right. having a number. So we try. I try to bring the abstract right. concepts that you learn in, mm-hmm. in school and bring them to life and have them right. be applicable to people. So one of the kids at the end, we have like pH strips. And so um, they tried to take the pH of their tongue. And that's really, and then, yeah, and that was really cool because one, um, we also <laughs> made, we made apple juice, for instance, we made apple juice with fresh basil from the aquaponic system in it. And so one, oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's like, so yeah, we'll talk about it a little bit more. Um, but um, yeah, so one of them had, had just had a cup of apple juice and one had it. And the one that hadn't had it, his pH was uh, seven. And the one that just drank the apple juice, his pH on his tongue was six. And they were like, it's different. Why is it different? Uh, like, and so, it. yeah, and the pH of the apple juice is a lot lower. It's like four or three. We tested it also. And then they figured out, oh, maybe it's because of that. So then you can see, like, why, what is pH? Conceptually, you learn it in school. What, what, but how, what does it really mean? Like, you know, so I try to make it applicable to to them I uh, I think I was introduced to pH when um, I have a higher tail hernia and so uh, when I went to my doctor he said you have to get on an alkaline diet and I was like what does mm. that mean he said you have to drink high pH water during the time that you're taking this medication and I'm like looking into the... and then I found out and listen the high pH water is so great it's so clean tasting mm. at least to me so what uh, so sometimes if I don't drink regular water I'm just my pH, how do I make this myself? Because I want to yeah. have this all the time, you know? Yeah. So, Fascinating. That's good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Have, this, have the students expressed any negativity or ne- negative attitudes towards the gardening and, you know, just having the experience of growing indoors? Yeah. So, um, 
so they usually start out thinking, oh, this is going to be stupid. This lady is going to come here with her plant stuff. It's going to be stupid. And it's so <laughs> funny um, how yeah. it, 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 they'll, you know, turn around. Of course, it, when, they're, when they're upset about something, there's nothing I can do to, you know, mm-hmm. to make them unupset. But I usually am able to um, interest them um, one way or another because my goal really is to meet them where they are and just get them a little closer towards right. trying something. So one of the examples was, for instance, the apple juice that I just mentioned. So like step one is just having mm-hmm. apple juice by itself uh, with some tiny little bit of basil. It's just it, We grow that um, using the fish poop. So I explain that to them and then they realize and they're eating you know, fish poop indirectly Right. And then they're like, "Oh, I don't want to eat that." I'm like, "Well, wh- what you know? What do you what do you have? What did you have for dinner?" Okay, they say, oh, "I don't know, um, chicken and broccoli." Well, what does the broccoli grow in? You know, oh, soil. Where does soil come from? Oh, yeah, it's partly right. poop. Same with right. the, even the chicken. The chicken eats plants and bugs that live in the right. dirt. You know, it's all part of poop. And then they're like, "Oh," you know. And so, oh, it's, it's, so even if they start out being all like, oh, this is going to be stupid, this is gross, whatever, I, I mm. connect it back to them so that they, they, they can't deny that what, what, what we're talking about is interesting because it's like, it's, right. you, you eat this every day of the week, you know, you eat this. So, exactly. Yep. And once they realize that, they're like, oh. And then so step one is then having apple juice with um, um, basil. And then step two is then adding ginger to it, which adds a totally different flavor. Uh-huh. And yeah. And then the, uh, even today had a girl who went, we did, she did all the way. She had carrot juice, which is like the more advanced, you know, <laughs> right? because it's like, um, if it's your first time with sprout, usually they, usually they haven't had um, much, you know, um, like fresh things like that. So right. or healthy, you know, like juices and things that you make yourself. And so, um, yeah, we have different yes. levels kind of, 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 of um, more and, you know, more, more intense, healthy, okay. and green snacks. So you also infuse art and poetry. How does that play a part in the training that you do? Yeah, so the, um, we really like to, like I was saying earlier, I want to in- include everybody that I meet. And if I only, you know, um, if I only go at it from, for instance, the gardening aspect, it, it would only get right. certain amount of people. But what I do is I right. also... Um, Go, for instance, with the aquaponics. There's fish in there. Um, and so people that don't care about the, um, the plants will then be right. like, oh, but I like fish. I have fish at home. What about these fish? And so I get, you know, they're interested in that way. And then uh, I also do, for instance, we do composting. Um, and then at first, some people are like, oh, gross worms. And then others are like, oh, bugs, bugs, I love it, you know? So... Everybody gets like uh, um, something um, depending on on their personality, and some kids love everything, but right. those that don't, I do so many. We do so many different things that at some point they find mm-hmm. something. So we even do like butterflies. We do you know mushrooms. Like there's so many, and then of course is the chickens. We do a lot of chicken keeping too for the eggs, um, mm-hmm. showing right. people where eggs come I'm from. Because a lot of people, you know, it's crazy, but they don't realize that eggs come from a living being. They just think, oh, it comes from right. aisle one in the supermarket, you know. No, it comes from a, from a chicken <laughs> like egg, in yes. a hen, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. That is amazing. You're doing some amazing work. Um, so Thank what, you. So what crops are you growing on? Would it, are they regional or what, what do you call it? What do we used to call yeah. it in uh, Florida? I guess it is regional. Yeah. Or yeah. So yeah, and, and also, yeah, and seasonal. Um, so right now, with the in, yeah, the indoor um, cr- um, things that we're growing right now is mostly herbs and greens. So we're growing a lot of basil, cilantro, mm-hmm. dill, lettuce, kale, a lot of kale. Yeah. Yep. And um, mm-hmm. that's my favorite. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's, so, it's so good. It's so good. And then in the summertime, we'll plant um, the um, like we'll plant more tomatoes and cucumbers and corn and pumpkins all that kind of stuff and then we have certain gardens that um, are specifically like we have some com- like community gardens that are in neighborhoods and the people that use them are um, of like for this very uh, Caribbean um, group and so over there we actually mm-hmm. plant all these Caribbean things that you can't like buy in New York City so it's really oh, um, yeah so we, we, we put you know like uh, 
bitter melon, for instance. Like that's not a thing that you buy. Like, I don't know if you know it or sopropo. You call it in another different language. Um, mm. It's like this this thing that you can't buy it in the store. And so we grew that because right. these people love it, and we were like, yeah, let's right. plant some. We have, you know. So we kind of like uh, want to, um, yeah, in, in, include people's wishes as well. I know. I think bitter melon has another name. Joy, if you're on, what's bitter melon in, in our? What would you? What do we call it? Because I know it's something that we eat. And, uh, yeah, we it's, like. it's like a pretty. Do you have a garden cucumber. of your own that you have? <laughs> You have a garden of your own in the summertime? So, yeah, I have a, 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 this will be my first time outdoors, but I've always had an indoor garden. So I have a, a oh. hydroponic indoor garden and I have a, a windowsill, uh, like a kitchen herb, okay. yeah, garden. Like what you grew up with, yeah. I know, I know that one. <laughs> um, so Good you can news. give us some... Uh, Kariley, that's oh, what it is. It's with the little yes, bumps, the green yes, thing with the bumps, the bumps on it. Look I a little, love that. So, yeah, yeah. Yes, Kariley is what we call it. It's so so cool. we just saw some in the grocery store in our farmer's market. Um, yeah, that's the wrong spelling, but don't worry about it. <laughs> we just saw some, and um, I, I like it because it's really good for the body to help with um, if you're overheated. You know, sometimes mm. we have heat bumps and stuff. It cools down the body, but you have to wash it out very well because it's very very bitter but then you add salt and pepper oh my gosh and you can put that with some bacalao or salt fish or whatever it yes, is so yes, good yes. yeah I, know, but I grew up on it I grew there up on you it. go see yeah so, yeah, yeah that's um, awesome so what's your what's the biggest challenge right now um you face farming in an urban setting if any at all so space is really you know Mm -hmm. the biggest challenge so a lot of places that we go to don't even have any garden space so we have to like no ground so it's like either all mm -hmm. um cement or blacktop or something so sometimes we're able to uh, break it break it up and secondly then the soil itself often has been um has been you know contaminated with either lead from right. the buildings and so so what you have to really mm -hmm. watch out what you do so we always make sure that we grow food not in the ground but we do raised beds so that it's um, okay. on top of it, and we bring in fresh compost, fresh soil to make okay. sure that we're growing safely. So that's really a big challenge. And then, you know, just space in general, like every little inch of the city is being built up, you know? So, yes. Yeah. Yes. So it's, it's all premium. So we, 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 we try to be creative and we go on the rooftop, on our vertical, you know? Like there's a lot of people who are yeah, seeing the benefits of vertical gardening as well because it takes less space. And so that works as yeah. well. So yeah, the, the hydroponic system that I use is a vertical system. So you have uh, like 32 plants right. in, in four square foot, which is really cool. Mm. Yeah. 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 I used to do that when I was in construction um, for the schools, really. They used to incorporate mm -hmm. hydroponic gardens and then have the rainwater filter to wet the plants and all that kind of stuff. So nice. really cool stuff. Yeah. So do you think yeah. that urban farming is the key? Do you think that urban farming is the key to a sustainable future? Oh, it's definitely part of it. Absolutely. Um, more like it, it's, I think the number is by 2050, 50% 50 of the world is going to be living in urban areas, something like that. I don't know. Don't quote me on the statistics, but it's a crazy number. More and more people are moving right. to the cities. And, um, yes. and so we need, you know, local food. Because it's it, it, at least part of it. I know that we, we won't be able to grow possibly everything for everybody in the city, but we can definitely right. do better than what we're doing right now. We can, you know, there's all Absolutely. these rooftops that can work. And, and it also, it's not just for food. I think it's important mm -hmm. for um, people to just be around living things, plants, animals, you yeah. know. Absolutely. Have, I totally like, agree. Yeah, have that around us. Uh, okay. Um, so what's in the future for Sprout by Design? So I, mean, I know you uh, guys are like pretty busy right now. Yes, yes, it's like the uh, with, um, it's, governmental yep. organization, City of New York. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um. Yeah. We, only the future can you know will know what is happening. So, but um. Yeah, we've been we've been growing a lot. So we're actually um. Yeah, we we're looking to expand our team. And um, okay. yeah, it's 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 really uh, beautiful to see like how different it is from ten years ago uh, when it started this kind of work, 
and now people left and right want us to you know um come yeah build gardens at their places and um yeah so it's it's really been a, been an honor to um yeah to be able to do this kind of work you know it's uh, um yeah Leslie my partner and I we both it's just like um we wake up and we're like I can't believe that this is our you know job <laughs> it's really cool right <laughs> yeah yes it, i think i think so too just um the idea of educating and educating in a different way so that kids learn because it's not about you know the theoretical all the time or sitting in a classroom with books all the time it's yep. you know it's no it needs, it needs, a, it needs both give... yep yeah i think it needs both i yep. think it's important to have that and it's important to also yeah. just and also just like get your hands dirty or even just like sit mm-hmm. there and even if it's not necessarily all educational in the traditional sense of the you know it's just having just connection with nature it it's, it's also very therapeutic it also you know it's like there's so many benefits it's not uh yeah it's it's really beautiful yeah i was talking about the thing earlier cuz um mm. my doctor is holistic and he encouraged me to earth yeah. i mean but we we walk bare in the dirt when we were younger growing up yeah. in the caribbean we just used to walk yep. and we, you know your mom would say put some shoes on and she didn't even realize that the electrons from the earth was really good, good and right? so even with gardening we did a lot we got our hands dirty all the time and yep. so you know let me yep. just shout out a few people i know we i think we got on time but um jo- Ka- Mali, i see you on here mel I am trying this new head wrap thing. Uh my <laughs> hair has been in a hot mess lately and I needed to come on camera looking sharp tonight. Ryan, I don't know you but thank you for joining. Yeah, Ra- those uh, are my those uh, are you coming yeah. on later. This is Yeah, oh, I, I know Ryan. Yeah, Ryan and I saw Ivan and I saw Chris oh, and okay. Michelle. Those are all yeah, all my people. Oh, I'm not seeing much people, so Oh, we, they I don't know. I guess they were okay, here. All of them showing up. Happy and then yeah yeah they come, yeah people come in and out yeah they come in and out yeah but yeah. thank you guys for joining of course yeah. um for those of you who are late this is ilona of sprout by design and she's just here rapping with us about you know urban farming and educating um yeah do educating the youth and all the yep. folk with um the city of new york and other non-profit organizations so as a takeaway can you tell us a little bit about if we were to start our own kitchen gardens that you know we know how to maybe we know how to do it during the summer but if we had to thrive during the winter can you give mm-hmm. us like three or four quick pointers on how we would get cool how to do that? it yeah definitely so i would do uh, the bigger the container the better because it stabilizes the um the water okay. needs yeah if you do smaller ones it dries out really quickly you know and then so um i i have like a really big i would say maybe to or 2 gallon 3 gallon um container like okay. you know with uh, um mm-hmm. and I grow um thyme and I grow um oregano and I grow um mint all those are soil um okay. in the soil and you just want it in in a sunny window um and okay. don't water so much that's really the key so having a um <laughs> a big a big container but not too much water and you want to make sure that the water dries out between um between uh that the soil dries out between watering that's really uh, important oh okay yeah yeah don't keep it too wet there's some plants that want it um wet but most plants don't they like they need it to be dry in between okay yeah so all right yeah. guys joyce lynn said this is that's good, good to, to know. know thank good. you <laughs> you're welcome you're welcome all right All right, Alona. I think you have shared a lot with us and we are very proud that you are championing this cause for, you know, um farming and getting kids into the gardening and keeping the old folk, the older folk in in that mood. Oh, Joy said she was a young farmer and didn't know. Yeah, she Joy no, grew up in Trinidad farming. Yeah. Yep. She did, she was on the land that grew There you up go. Stuff. But I know so she can definitely all, relate. You know, the most plants are different, so different, so not all. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Sorry. I just say that not all crops are the same yes, sir, yes, so some but not all plants are right. the same so it really depends like for instance like rice is very different you know again so but I'm talking oh, like the yep yeah, the herbs mm-hmm. that I grow they really like it to be dry every now and then right yep okay well I am going to try this little garden and I'll let you know how it goes up absolutely <laughs> absolutely and then but I do use so your own compost so <laughs> 
Yep. Okay, I will I will do that. <laughs> But thank you so much for joining us. This has been wonderful. Muldi says very informative. Thank you. Thank And this you. guys is going, you know this guy is going to be up on my page, but um this has been hot talk with Mel and we're just talking about environmental wellness and getting you guys to be you know a little more um conscious of the environment. Um the guys in charge are not doing a really good job. I would say that. So when we have people like Alona, we have her. Thank you so much Alona. You're welcome. You so welcome. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. <laughs> Okay. Guys, I'm going to see you next week. We have um we're going to talk to Viva Hamilton Harmony Company and she's going to be sharing on how to create a harmonious immediate environment on a budget. So if you guys go join me back right here next week Thursday at 8:00, we're going to have Viva come on and she's going to talk about starting her company, just running through the whole paces of um getting it out there. Um Viva was actually a client of mine so I'm very happy to bring her back on here to meet you guys and to chat about just creating safe spaces within your home. It doesn't take much but she's a designer. So, head wrap who did it? Joy did it. Yes, thank you Joy. Mel said she loves the head wrap. I I'm getting to like it too. See more of these. What y'all think? Yes. I don't know said send me any questions about the garden. That definitely you guys go follow her on Instagram at Sprout by Design and um th- there's a Facebook page as well so I'll put those up as soon as I get out of here. So um yes joy the head wrap. Yes you did it. Thank you so much. So guys, thank you for joining me. This has been such an informative um segment of Hard Talk with Mel. I'll probably have to introduce Ilona to all about the sisters and maybe we do a nice gardening session together. I think that would really be good. What do you guys think? Send me a thumbs up or something if you if you en- if you would enjoy that. But guys, have a wonderful good night. It's still the night is still young. Go read a book, do something. Candy said Carly. Ka- Carly. Oh yeah, Carly. That's the name of the candy. You you're absolutely right, Carly. Yeah. All right guys, well, have a good one. See you see you next week. Bye.